Welcome to the Red Chair Series. I'm Lisa Ishii, Senior Vice President for Operations for the Johns Hopkins Health System. Delighted to have as our guest, Dr. Kavita Sharma, a heart failure expert. Dr. Sharma, what is your role at Johns Hopkins? And tell me a little bit about your work. Thank you, Dr. Ishii, it's great to be here. Uh, I am the Director of Heart Failure and Cardiac Transplantation at Johns Hopkins, and I also direct a clinic for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction patients. Fantastic. So Dr. Sharma, teach us what's the difference between heart failure and other major cardiac diseases like a heart attack or a cardiac arrest? Lisa, that's a great question. So heart failure is a syndrome where the heart is unable to adequately support the body's needs. This can result in signs and symptoms that include fatigue, shortness of breath, and often fluid overload, where patients can experience swelling in the legs, in the abdomen, and significant fatigue and shortness of breath. Are there different types of heart failure? There are different types. The first distinction we generally make is between heart failure that are, is a result of the heart pump function actually being weak, and we call that heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. That separates from patients who have actually relatively intact heart pump function, but can still actually have the heart failure syndrome, and we call that heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Are there differences by demographics in the individuals who get one type of heart failure over another? For a long time, our primary focus has been on heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, which tends to be more prevalent in men compared to women. But as we are learning more about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, what we are understanding is that this is actually more common in women than men and is often under-recognized. Are there ways that um, individuals can reduce their risk of getting heart failure? Absolutely. So for years, uh, ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease has been the leading cause of congestive heart failure. With advances in preventive therapies, such as statin therapy, for example, to lower cholesterol, that incidence is lowering in the heart failure population. And we are finding that other comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, and obesity are now the leading drivers of congestive heart failure, particularly with patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Oh, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Are there any medications that we should be aware of, either existing or soon to be released from research for heart failure? Absolutely, so treatment for heart failure has really transformed in the last 10 years. Um, we previously commonly used beta blockers and medications called ACE inhibitors and ARBs to treat heart failure for over 30 to 40 years. Um, we now have medications that improve both survival and symptoms in this patient population. And we typically use a combination of around four medications in patients with low ejection fraction heart failure, which is now the standard of care. This has really improved survival, hospitalization rates, and symptoms for patients. Kavita, can you tell us a little bit about medical treatments for patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction? Absolutely. So for years, Lisa, we really had very limited therapies for this patient population. And just for perspective, there are over 6 million adults in the United States who have congestive heart failure. And half of those patients have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So over 3 million or so with no real therapies besides diuretics, for example, these are pills that allow patients to remove excessive volume, so to speak. Um, we now have some exciting new treatments for this patient population. A lot of these therapies are targeting multiple diseases like diabetes and obesity and are now showing benefit in this heart failure population. So the landscape is really changing for patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Oh, that's fantastic. Any last things that you want women to know about ways they can either um, pick up on earlier or prevent getting heart failure? Absolutely. So as with most cardiovascular conditions, unfortunately, these are un often under-recognized and underdiagnosed in women compared to men. And that is often because women present at a later stage or often ignore signs and symptoms. And that can be because women present later with their symptoms or often don't recognize the symptoms themselves. Women who are experiencing fatigue that is not explained by other causes, signs of fluid overload such as swelling in the legs or inability to sleep at night without elevating themselves should be evaluated for an underlying cardiac condition. 
The workup typically includes some basic laboratory tests and often an echocardiogram, which is a typical first-line imaging study of heart function, and from that point onwards, further diagnostic testing. Dr. Sharma, this was fantastic. I learned so much. Thank you for all that you're doing to treat and prevent heart failure, both in women and in all patients. And thank you for joining us on the Red Chair series. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.